time for a hugely anticipated album slash album review. They've both been highly anticipated because a ton of you guys have been asking me to review this and the album was, you know, speculated for a long time. And the reason it was delayed so much was because of a freaking record label. Victory Records held up the release of Common Courtesy by A Day to Remember. This is their fifth studio album and they partially won their lawsuit. I don't fully understand everything, but basically they got permission to independently release Common Courtesy, an album that's been talked about for a very long time and their first album since 2010's What Separates Me From You. Homesick, personally, is what got me into the band, and that's more of what I enjoy from the band, but this is their first album since 2007's album that really incorporates more of a metal feel to a lot of these songs. Metalcore and pop punk are two genres that they're commonly thrown under, and I think that definitely does encompass what this album is all about. There's tracks that go acoustic, there's tracks that go definitely a lot more metal, like the lead single, Violence, Enough is Enough. Then you've got your pop punk style tracks, like Right Back At It Again. Really, this album has a little bit to offer for pretty much any type of fan. Me, personally, I enjoy their pop punk side of things the most. My favorite formula for the band is when they, you know, do some phrases that are screamed, mix it with the hard guitars, but the pop punk style vocals become predominant. That's just me personally. I know a lot of people prefer heavier A Day to Remember. Let's go through this thing track by track starting with City of Ocala. It reminds me a ton of the band's past two albums, Homesick and What Separates Me From You. I know a lot of people, once again, are going to argue that, you know, this song right here is a perfect example of that they've gone soft, but I definitely don't think that's the case. Continue listening to the album before you keep saying that. Solid opener for this record, and it flows perfectly into possibly my favorite song overall on this record, which is called Right Back At It Again, a line and a title that have been referenced many times by the band, so I pretty much, it was pretty much a guarantee that it was going to be a song title, or I thought it might have even been an EP title before the album Common Courtesy came out. Right Back At It Again starts off with some of those screamed vocals and fades into this fast pop punk jam with edgy hardcore moments that really make this song lead the pack in the sense that it makes a name for itself and a full identity more than many of the songs on Common Courtesy. Right Back At It Again to me personally feels like a band sending a message to a record label that pretty much tried to shut them down and tried to pretty much stamp them out by saying like, look, we're just going to drag this out until you have no money anymore. And this song is all about like them getting back in Victory Records' face and pretty much saying, we're going to keep touring, we're going to keep making music, we're right back at it again no matter what you say. The song has a memorable change in pace near the end of the track with some hammering guitars that really crash in and a fade out that sees Jeremy singing, don't want to hear about it, bitch. He kind of holds that word out and then we hear the band members discussing and talking in the studio and saying, yeah, yeah, leave the bitch, I like the bitch. Sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. Very true statement, and this song starts off, once again, a little bit raw and in the studio and builds into a monster of a song. Honestly, one of the best and heaviest songs possibly that I day to remember I've ever done. Lots of angry stabs are taken by Jeremy in this song, and rightfully so. The song definitely makes sense lyrically, and after seeing what all the band have been put through by Victory Records and everything with their record label, it's more than likely dedicated to the owner of Victory Records, Tony Brummel, as McKinnon sings. You want to take, take, take it away from me. You can't wait till I'm suffering. Longtime fans are definitely going to be pleased with this song. Very, very heavy and intense and passionate track. Dead and Buried keeps up the intense pace set by the last track and once again fuels the anger McKinnon has been feeling throughout this entire album, Common Courtesy, so far. Guitar-wise, this track feels a bit generic and lacking. It just lacks that unique identity that makes a lot of their songs so memorable to me. The breakdown isn't anything special whatsoever, and the chorus is also fairly weak compared to most of the songs on this album. Overall, the song fails to catch my interest. Best of Me sees a more pop-punk approach to things, so prepare to shift into a little bit of a lower gear at this point in the album. I really do enjoy this track, lyrically especially, as it's relatable to me. I see Jeremy talking about, you know, struggling to get along with his dad and how him and his dad said that, you know, you were right, Dad, we never will get along. It's something that's, you know, going on in my life with me and my dad right now, so it's definitely something I'm relating to. 
I really like the guitars on this track. They still pound loudly and really add a solid backing to what is possibly the best chorus on this record besides maybe End of Me, but we'll get to that in a minute. Definitely one of the best songs on Common Courtesy with hard guitars, fast paced drums, and a hard pop punk feel to it as a whole. I'm Already Gone sees the band take things slow and acoustic, something that they're no stranger to. Actually, You Had Me at Hello is one of the first A Day to Remember songs I ever heard, so I definitely heard that song, side of them early on and really got interested and intrigued that they could have such a heavy side and then such a soft side. And I'm not dissing it at all, I think it's great that they can encompass so many different polar ends of things. The song is no letdown by any means and it really highlights Jeremy's vocal talents. The track is kind of about it, escaping a situation that is doing nothing but bringing someone down and walking out the door and really just relaying the message I'm already gone to everyone who doubted that he would make it past all of these setbacks. Then we get to the single, the lead single from this album, Violence, Enough is Enough. First track released from Common Courtesy a considerable amount of time ago so people were just, you know, they were stoked about it but they were like, alright, when's the album coming, when's the album coming? And you can thank Victory Records for holding that one up. I was totally caught off guard by how heavy this song was upon first listen, and it wasn't really something that I was into, not because of the heaviness of the track, just because the fact that it felt generic lyrically to me, and it's just not saying or relaying anything that hasn't been said numerous times, and musically, too. I mean, there's nothing out of the ordinary here, nothing, no spice in the mix. It almost sounds like a recycled bullet from my Valentine song to me, at least guitar-wise. Life at 11 really gets a little bit more upbeat with things and sees the return of predominant clean vocals from Jeremy. Extremely catchy, slick bass work and a powerful vocal presentation made this song an immediate standout to me. I Surrender is the next track and it starts cleanly with acoustic guitars and vocals that remind me just ever so slightly of Daughtry. I don't want to piss anyone off with that reference, it's honestly just what I heard and I just heard it momentarily. Just probably the way the song is styled musically as well, it just kind of felt like that for a second. And the chorus, once that rolls around, it definitely opens things up a little bit more, but overall this song fails to build into anything special. Life Lessons Learned the Hard Way definitely gets harder once again and starts that heavy feel, and it's really intriguing track if you think about it. Although I can't help but compare to Bullet From My Valentine once again, guitar-wise, or even maybe Escape the Fate, it's definitely not an insult to A Day to Remember because both of those bands that I mentioned have really talented guitarists, and this way they definitely still, while I can compare them to that, it also makes a name for itself and really just gets creative and intense. End of Me is a track that I truly connect with and has in turn become one of my favorite songs by the band to date. Although it has a slow open to it, the track blasts in with this crushing chorus that fills with all kinds of guitars and an amazingly passionate and honest chorus overall. I feel like we see Jeremy opening up a little bit more on this track personal life, personal issues more so than just dealing with like, you know, anger and record label drama and that sort of thing. The document speaks for itself, speaking of record label drama, that's exactly what you think it is. This track is all about Victory Records. A message to the record label for all the bullshit they put the band through. The original version actually included a voicemail from Tony Brumble talking to the band about, you know, I'm gonna sue you, boy. I saw that Absolute Punk asked Jeremy in an interview how listeners could possibly connect or relate to a song about lawyers and record labels, and I'm thinking to myself, seriously? They relate to it because it's a song done by a band that they love, and that's how they relate to it. And, of course, the song isn't just something that, you know, is all about. It, it can't be related to anything else. It can't be applied to any other situations in life. I think that this song is relatable because everyone's got that one person or one group or entity that's trying to bring you down sometimes in life. And this is about overcoming those things and just putting them to the side and focusing on doing what you do best. Then we get to the closing track on the record, I Remember, and it sees the band kicking it old school and just having fun, reminiscing on the early days of the band, the first time they saw the country on tour, etc. The song clocks in at nine minutes long, but the song is only actually around four minutes. The rest of the time is just chatter between the band, talking about the good old days, war, trading war stories, etc. And I think it's kind of cool that they kind of let us in on that and let us see that side of the band and included that on Common Courtesy. 
Overall, this record was not a letdown to me for the most part. There were moments that just that failed to impress me or failed to live up to what I know a day to remember is capable of, but it's a four out of five for me overall. There's definitely, like I said, something to offer for every kind of a day to remember fan on this album. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. Let me know what I need to review next. I got a couple of reviews coming hopefully over the weekend and into next week. Next week I'm actually taking off to Atlanta to see Avenged Sevenfold live in concert. So hopefully that's an awesome show and I will see you guys very soon for more reviews. Make sure you subscribe right here at Album Review TV Beyond the Reviews.